Hey guys, Maury with 316 Automotive. Welcome back and another edition of the Internet Car Show that's all about uh, car repair and resto. And in this case, horse trailer repair. Yeah, you heard me right. Watch this. My daughter calls me up and there's a normal wheel. There's this one. She goes, is it okay if one of the wheels is making a lot of noise? and uh, smoking? Um, no. Looks like the bearings are gone, so I'm going to have to take this thing all apart and find out what bearings and uh, press some new ones in there and stuff. All right, hold on. Here's the rest of the parts. There's the nut. There's the inner race that goes right there. The bigger one, they're two sizes. Here's the inner race for the outer. And there's a washer. And there is, looks like the outer, yeah, it looks like the outer race. That's all that's left of the outer race of the outer bearing. Because there's two bearings here. There's one on the inside. Then there's one on the outside. So, and you can see the outside hub here is all cleaned out, so everything we got's down there. All right, I wanted to show you guys the, the gnarling that the bearings did. When the bearings squirted out, they damaged the axle shaft. I'm gonna have to take a grinder or a file and file that smooth and, uh, and then get back to it. And the, the brakes here are worn to paper thin on this side. Over here they're okay, but I'm gonna replace them all. And I might as well replace them all on both sides. If you do one, you gotta do the other. So uh, I gotta figure out where these brake shoes come from too. This ain't like ordering for a car or a truck. <sighs> all right, see ya. All right, guys. I got new. I got a new um, uh, hub here because this old one was all bored out right in here from the spindle, and there was no saving that. So I got a new hub and uh, two new sets of brake shoes. There's one. The other one's out there, and we're gonna get this thing going. I figured since since this side with the damaged spindle since you know the one that with the problem since that was those brake shoes were toast I figured the other side is probably pretty uh, close to it as well so I'm going to change those brake shoes uh, at the same time so still working on it all right here's one brake shoe on and what you want to do is you want to get a pair of uh, needle nose um, vice grips get behind here and grab the pin. See this pin here? Because on these trailers, you can't really get to the back of it on this side. So you grab that pin like that, and then you get you a big pair of vice grips, and you can grab hold of the uh, spring keeper here, and you can twist that around and get it to where it'll lock in. So make sure you grease, you know, all the contact points right there, uh, right there, and uh, of course the rotation point right there. And then after we get that done, I'll do the other side here, and then we'll get the adjuster in. All right, there it is all together. Remember when I told you just a bit ago, this end of this spring it had to be turned around facing facing forward so I did that to modify it to to fit these brake shoes because of the the slots there were not like the originals but then everything else is in place I'm gonna zip tie this with a stainless steel zip tie right here to there loosely because that's what it had a hog ring it had a hog ring there, 
but uh, I put this this uh, loom on there so I need it bigger so no big deal all right let's see how it goes together okay guys I'm gonna grease up the bearings here you got two bearings that you gotta do this is the outer bearing this is the inner bearing it's bigger of course and uh, you want to work grease into it so I'm gonna show you how to do that have yourself a good can of grease Put the bearing in your hand, get a bunch of grease, slather it on there, and then work it in. Roll it around. You want to work it into the bearing. And keep doing that. Don't be shy about the grease. Lather it on, press it in, roll it around, over and over. You want lots of grease inside this bearing, otherwise you're going to be doing this job again. Alright, I got the bearings greased. Right there. And away. And I worked the grease in, so now I'm greasing up the hubs, or the hub rather. Hey guys, I want to show you something about the spindle here. I've had to take some sandpaper and sand around the spindle because it's boogered up little bit you can see right right there when they the last bearing let loose it was bad so that's why I'm rebuilding this thing but I've been sanding down the spindle to make it smooth because when you stick your inner bearing on there you want to be able to push it up against the shoulder of the spindle and pull it off so that because the dust cover, the grease cover for the um, the hub, it go. You put the bearing in there. I'll just get it and show you. Wow! All right, looky down here. You put your bearing in first. Get that seated, and you get your your uh, grease cover, and you tap that in all the way around. And that stays as a unit and then this whole unit goes on and off here so you really want to have your spindle surfaces smooth and if they're boogered up like this one then you just got to sand the heck out of it and I've got a Dremel tool with a flapper disc that uh, flapper wheel rather that um, that helped out quite a bit and then sheets of sandpaper to get it smooth so I've got the uh, seal surface Still needs a little work, but I got the bearing surface smooth, so that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, I've sanded the spindle so it's nice and smooth, but it's still it's still got the damage in it, but that's sub flush. And now I'm greasing it up because I I ain't gonna take this axle off. You got to pull the whole axle off in order to, because this swing arm here is all part of the spindle. It's welded together. So you got to get a whole new swing arm here. And I'm just not going to do that. Grease it up good. I've test fit the bearing and the seal. They go on good. So now we're in the process of assembly. Here's something I forgot to tell you. When before you put the hub on, the wiring for the uh, e-brake, it had a bull clip that I had to cut off. That's around this spring right here. And so what you want to do, you want to get yourself. Uh, what I'm doing is getting myself a little piece of tubing and 
rubber tubing and I'm just kind of measuring out what that would take to kind of anchor it loosely there and then I'm just cutting the tubing and then I've got a metal um, zip tie here that I'm going to tie around it so keep that in mind you don't want this wire flopping around because it'll it'll start impinging or or setting on the uh, the hub um, the inner diameter of the hub the boss where the where the bearing goes and you want it to be tied up to the spring here but loosely though all right there you go you look at my little metal zip tie with the hose on it and it's loose so it's going to be fine hey guys i wanted to go over the uh the tightening of the large castellated nut and you know socking it down and getting the bearings uh tensioned up inside there uh, what you want to do is when you have i like to have the wheel on but you don't have to have the wheel on you do have to course have the hub but anyway uh, get your bearings on there pack them with grease like I've done here and then you uh, run this nut on and this particular one has a washer on the back side so make sure you get that in there but some don't and that's fine so you run your nut down and you torque it to about 50 foot pounds or so just honk on it pretty good and and rotate the wheel and that will seat the bearing and then after you do that you back this nut off again till it's loose and then you tighten it up finger tight and you should be able to make the um the cotter pin go in the hole right there you know in this case um if you can't you work the the um you work the nut around um, to get these castellations in line with the holes so you can get it in which I've already done here and what that'll do if it's a little bit loose is okay a little bit tight is not so good so if you're gonna err, err on the loose side so and how you do that is you just grab the wheel up top here and down bottom and that's why I like to keep the tire on because you can get a uh, better moment arm and you just you just shake it back and forth you know you pull the top out push the bottom in and vice versa to get this thing wiggling if you can feel just a little bit of motion then that's good if you got a lot of motion then you got to go tighter and if you can't feel any motion back off the nut another castellation and try it again and you want just a hair of wiggle motion when you're shaking the tire with both hands top and bottom and when you've got just a hair then you're you're good to go like if this thing gets gets too tight okay back it off one castellation and uh, and then try it again try the wiggle thing again if it didn't work back it off another castellation and try the wiggle thing again and if you've got a little bit of wiggle all right that's where you want to be so just a little top tip there. Uh, I got to do all four wheels here, so we'll be back later. Hey guys, just wanted to update you on the trailer wheel here. I was I had set all I had set the wheels and set the brakes and set the bearings and everything, wrapping things up, greasing, and this Zerk fitting. This is a new one here, but the old one. Uh, crapped out and uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't hold the threads in there this is a quarter inch zerk fitting here and so well I just go up to the next size 5 16 and uh, drill and tap it well I didn't have that but I did have some of these m7s and I had a tap and of course a drill so heck just uh, tap it for the m7 because it's still the same the zerk fitting fits and so that's what I did I uh, drilled it, uh, 0.234 diameter drill bit for the M7 by one, and uh, and then you you tap it. Here's here's my tap, M7 tap, 
And then, top tip here, you've got grease in there, uh, and you got grease all around here. Take some, um, I've got PB Blaster here, but WD-40, and get the stick there, shove it, shove it deep in there, and let it run. Like, watch this. And that washes all the chips out. So you are good to go. You don't have to take this whole thing apart to, to tap that out. You can tap it in situ. So I'm going to put this on. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, there it is installed. Put the Zerk fitting on there. Now see how she goes. Look at that. You can see that grease pushing out. That Zerk fitting is working. And there it is, all done, greased up. Rubber grease cap on. Zerk fitting is tight. Push the grease out. And we are as done as done could be. All four wheels are done. I greased up everything else. I changed the brake shoes on both sides. On just, you know, the back wheels, that's where the brakes are. And uh, tightened up the bearings till it's just a little bit of wiggle play, very, very slight. And uh, greased everything up, and this trailer is is good to go. So, this is Maury, and this is a repair that deserves to be remembered.